We're going to look now at what the British Constitution is. The British Constitution basically means how is the way Britain is run put together. So we're going to have a look at all the bits that comprise it. To start with, have a look at the pictures on the board. You've got these in your booklets. What do you think they might represent? So we've got the crown, which is obviously the fact we've got a monarchy. We've got Boris Johnson, who's obviously the prime minister. A legal system, and then this isn't anything to do with putting your plates away. This is a cabinet, and in our government, we have what's known as the cabinet, who are the top 20 ministers. So they're people who are given really high roles, such as being in charge of education, so the Minister for Education, the Minister for Transport, the Minister for Health, and so on. So the different factors that make up the British Constitution. We've got the Prime Minister and the Cabinet, like we've just said. All the others we're going to go through and look what they mean. You do need to be aware of what they are and what they're there for. On the next slide, there are three party manifestos. You're going to decide which party you would vote for and why. So we've got Party A, they're going to spend more money on the NHS, increase tax on cars and put money in small businesses. Party B, increase the voting age to 19, increase money for sports in schools and money for the armed forces. Party C, more money in public transport to reduce pollution, ban the sales of cigarettes to help improve the NHS and lower the voting age to 16. Press pause and have a think who you want to vote for. That election that we would have done in class or you're doing with yourself at home, that's exactly the same way, well sort of exactly the same way, elections take place in politics. So when there's a general election, each party puts out their manifesto, a list of what they want to do and what their priorities will be. They say speeches, they hand out leaflets, they go on TV shows and they promote their interests. The electorate, the people who are going to vote, listen to each of the parties and then they decide which party they want to vote for. When you go to vote, you go to your lo local ballot office, which is usually a primary school or a library or somewhere like that. You go in, you're given a little sheet of paper called a ballot paper and you put a cross next to the name of the person who you want to vote for. You don't go in and vote for the Prime Minister, you go in and vote for your local MP. It will have the name of the person and it will have the party that they represent. In your constituency, your local voting area, there's about 70,000 people. All the votes are then counted up and the person that's got the most amount of votes becomes your MP, who represents everybody in their constituency, even if you didn't vote for them. They then count up how many MPs each party has got. And it's usually the party with the most MPs forms a government and they've won the election. The leader of that party becomes the Prime Minister. So what's government? How is it different to Parliament? And who goes where? So government is just the executive, the people who run the country. They're the party in control. Parliament is much, much more. So in Parliament, there are three aspects. You've got the House of Commons, that's the one you see on the news all the time where they're always arguing, the one with the green chairs. That's where the MPs go and they debate how to run the country. They make laws and things like that. They're the most powerful of the three of the two houses because they're the ones that were voted in. The second house is the House of Lords. They're not elected. These are people who are there just to check up on the government and make sure that it's all running smoothly. They do investigate different areas of interest of, to the public. They are there because most of them are experts in one role or another. It used to be you only became a lord if your dad was a lord and his dad was a lord, going back to the days of Lord of the Manor and having the servants running around after them. Since 1999, that's stopped. And most lords now have been chosen by the Prime Minister because they're experts in their field. People like Alan Sugar of The Apprentice, he was chosen by then Prime Minister Tony Blair. The last part of Parliament is the monarch, the king or queen. They're really only there for ceremonial value, but they do sign off laws. If the monarch wanted to, she could say no to a new law, but they haven't done that for hundreds of years. So government is a group of people who direct the way in which the country run. Parliament, 
Again, two bits. We live in a democratic country, so we've all got a say in how the country's run. We elect our MPs who represent our views. They're the ones with the greatest power. Then we've got the House of Lords and then we've got the Queen. This is a picture of the House of Commons and as you can see you've got all the different people standing round. There's actually only space for 437 MPs and 650 so you either have to squish in really really close or you don't get a say in some debates. That's then got problems for democracy. So again the three main parts of Parliament make sure you know them and who goes where. OK, so if we have a look at this, then we've got the speaker at the top. He's kind of like the Jeremy Coyle of Parliament of the House of Commons. He's the one who has to say order, order and get them to be quiet if they're arguing too much. We've then got the government at the front here. The prime minister will sit um, towards the front in the middle and then the ministers who are in the cabinet are all along the front bench. The other MPs in the government are at the back. On the opposite side, you've got the opposition, and this is the party who are the biggest opposition to the government. So at the moment, Conservatives are in government, Labour are the opposition. Then you've got the other opposition parties, um, and they'll be fitting where they can. So what is the role of Parliament? What's it there to do? What's Parliament's jobs? The first thing is to hold the government to account. They've got to check what the government are doing. It can't be like Nazi Germany was, where Adolf Hitler got rid of the other parties and just made his own decisions up. Parliament is there as like a security blanket to check up on the government to make sure they're not making stupid decisions. The other thing they do is make and amend the law. Parliament's called the legislator and that means that they're the ones who draw up the laws and process them. The last thing is to represent UK citizens. So your MPs are there to represent you and your ideas and changes you want to see happen. So next thing on there then is sovereignty of Parliament. If something is sovereign, it means that it's really, really special and that it is sort of sacred. Laws in this country should only get made in Parliament. That's what sovereignty of Parliament means. That basically the only place that laws can be made or changed is in Parliament. It's not always the case, but sovereignty of Parliament is that. Some quick questions, Pe press pause and have a go. OK, what about this then? Britain's constitution is a monarchical constitution rather than a republican one and a parliamentary constitution rather than a presidential one. See if you can work out what that means. So, rule of law in the British constitution, that means that everybody, no matter who they are, must obey the law. They won't face any leniency depending on if they're a peer or not. That means if you're a lord what sex you are, religion or financial standing. It's a massive part of our democracy and the, our constitution that everybody should face the law exactly the same. It means that there's legal certainty, fairness and equality in due process, that everyone will go through the same process. So how do police fit into this? How are they part of the British constitution? Well, they're the ones who uphold the law. They're the ones who have to find you and investigate crimes if you go against the law. And what's a jury? Jury are everyday members of the public who listen to serious criminal cases in a Crown Court. They decide if the person is innocent or guilty. It's really important again to our democracy because they're everyday people who are making decisions. It's not all coming from above. It's everyday people being part of our society. The civil service. The civil service are basically people who run the do the day to day running of the country. So they do the jobs that the government needs doing. So they're things like people who work out your benefits and your pensions. They run employment services and prisons. They're the people who sort your driving license out and your passport. They also look at policy development. So, for example, all this stuff with coronavirus. They're the ones who are trying to do the day to day running of sorting out testing and all the different laws that go along with it. They have to be politically impartial. So they're not allowed to be politically biased because that would mean that they would favour certain policies. 
They also have to have anonymity. Their names are never put on any policies because obviously if somebody didn't like it, they could go and find them. They also have permanence, which means even if the current government are voted out, they don't lose their jobs, they carry on. Question for you on the board. And there are your answers.